Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Julie with Sanctuary Gardens and this is my friend Summer Cromwell. Hi. She's currently pruning our fully mature apple tree right now. Um, this one has been needing a lot of work over the last few years. So every year I seem to have a lot of work to do, but every year it seems to get better and better. I wanted to bring you all along to show you um, some little tips on how to prune a fully mature fruit tree. And Summer's gonna help along with that too. She's had a lot of experience doing this. A couple things you'll need for pruning a fruit tree. Um, some good pruning shears here, pruning loppers. Um, a ladder is also great if your tree is really high and really tall. Um, the gloves are also really nice. Um, maybe not completely necessary. Um, the other thing you could use is sometimes there's those really, what do you call those? Really long telescoping, telescoping. Pruning. Shears. I have one, but it doesn't work super well, so I tend mostly to the ladder and my pruning shears and loppers. And it's super mucky, so you'll see the sea sliding around all over the place. <laughs> That's how I can tell if things are dead or not. I just snap up. So the first tip for pruning is to make sure that you prune off any diseased or dead limbs. And Summer and I were testing out this limb because it seemed like it was dead. And the, the easiest way to check is to break off a piece. Oh not focused there we go and you look inside and it's brown there's no green yeah see that's a good example so this part of this limb at least is dead we're trying to see how far back it goes and if that is the case then you would just prune off I think it's however much it. is dead or diseased yeah that's pretty dead I to think me. we're done with this whole branch probably I can't <laughs> the mud is slippery <laughs> Summer's gonna give it a shot here. Oh shoot! Not you very don't clean. Want your bark to strip. What Summer is pointing to right here, those are called water shoots or water sprouts. Um, they're very common when you've pruned a tree that suddenly in early spring it'll shoot up a bunch of these shoots here, and they are not great producers. Period. So basically, just lop all of those off. Anything that is going completely vertical is not going to be a great one for producing fruit. So one of the things with, you can see this knob here with all these other cuts. It's because the, these branches have been cut previously. And when you prune, you want to cut this as absolutely close to the main branch as you can. Because that's why it's putting out all these extra water shoots. Because this whole growth knot module here is still here. So when you cut these, you got to get as tight to the main stem. So for some of these, I would cut all the way back to here, which I can't do with these. I need to get my bigger loppers, but all these other ones, but as close to your main branch as you can. And then they're less likely to put out more water spots in the future. So the thing I forgot to mention that you might need in your toolbox is a, a saw, which I don't have a great one, but Summer right now is going to be ah. sawing off a large portion of the limb there because it's just um, crossing with other limbs and it's not going to be producing too much. So what I'm going to do is cut it out here first to get all the weight and then I'm going to cut it back to flush with the main branch. If I start flush with the main branch, the weight of this is gonna peel the bark and we don't wanna peel the bark off. We wanna keep that bark on. So I'm gonna cut it out here first and then clean it off when there's no weight on it. Woo! So then if you see here, can you get close enough to See how it peeled all this bark back? That's because of the weight of the limb. So now that the weight is gone, I can take this whole chunk and cut it off flat and I won't get that peeling. Awesome. Another tip for pruning is to check for branches that cross. And as you can see here, there's two branches that are crossing. We have that one there and that one there. And Summer's gonna explain our reasoning as to which one, we're, how we're gonna deal with this situation. I would, looking at these then, this one on top is, I'm moving it. All of this is crossing with this stuff. These out here, they're all of these out here. They're going to shade this whole branch and this branch is healthier and closer to the ground, which is going to be easier for picking. So eventually I would take this entire branch. The rest of it is this little bit here. And then this wonky thing up here, which you're not going to pick off of 
the birds are gonna get this one. So I would cut this all the way back to here, but we've already taken some big branches off this tree and you don't wanna take more than a third or so of a tree every year. So I would cut everything going this direction off this branch so that it's not shading out this branch. All of this gone and probably this thing for this year. Of course, taking out these water sprouts too off of this one. And then next year, I'd, I would take this whole thing out for next year. Again, try to prune as close to your main branch as you can. You want that to be flat. That already looks like it's gonna let in more sunlight. Yeah, now you'll get a lot more sun to your central that side, which is on the north side. We'll get more sun too with all of these things. There's Summer, precariously trying to find her way down <laughs> the tree. I wanted to show here uh, these two limbs, how right there they're crossing over. And that's a no-no because uh, you think of like wind and such, like they can wear patterns. They also shade the other branch. So you're not going to get good at fruit ripening. So um, I'm probably going to end up taking this one out just because I don't like this angle here. I feel like it's weak. Um, so, but you could take the other one out too if you wanted. And these are trees over here, the two pear and the right one on the right is an apple tree that are fully pruned. Look how nice they look. A lot more space and sunlight can get through now. I wanted to show an after of this apple tree that we heavily pruned today. And you can see that there was a few fairly large branches that we took off. There's one there, there, back there. Um, but it looks a whole lot better and healthier. And this tree I imagine is gonna do a very, have a very productive summer of fruit producing. All right, so as you can see, the tree is fully pruned. Um, I couldn't have done it without my friend Summer because every few, <laughs> like 15 minutes, it seems like I was running inside to take care of my baby. Um, and we are, Summer is pretty muddy. Yes, there, and I, I am too. So we got a lot of evidence of our fun day. You wanna mention about why we're pruning now this time of year? Oh yeah, um, so in the Pacific Northwest, you would prune your fruit trees like January, early February, when they are very dormant and that keeps them from, you know, putting energy out into branches that they're not going to keep. By pruning now, um, when they do start, you know, coming back in the spring, they are putting all their energy into what we want them to put energy into. And um, if you did it in the fall, when they are starting to go dormant, they're gonna think that they have to like heal themselves really quick and so then they'll spend a ton of energy trying to regrow and that's not what we want we want them to be able to focus on what's left when they start yeah. springing back thanks for joining us today folks hope that you learned something new uh, be sure to like and subscribe for future videos and my friend summer is going to be uh, kind of joining in as a co-contributor to my channel since i'm a busy mom now and so uh, you'll see some new things from her and i'll try to put out something maybe once a month or so uh, awesome. take care and god bless <laughs> Flip for real